Hi everybody, it's Franny, and since we've been using the i8 quite a bit, uh, we had some discussions, Heidi and I did, about these two cars. So this may look like kind of a strange compare, but I think it's going to be a lot of fun. On this side over here, we have a 2004 Porsche Turbo. Back in the day, this was a very expensive car and very, very fast. This is a 2015 i8. So what could they possibly have in common? Interestingly enough, these cars are pretty close in price actually, in value. So it kind of begs the question, would you go for an older, more, more manual and more raw and visceral car, or would you go for something quite a bit newer? It's kind of an interesting question, I think. They, they have their pluses and minuses, so let's delve into it. We're gonna check out both cars, and we're gonna see, see if we can come up with a consensus. And I really, really wanna hear all of your opinions down in the comment section below on which one of these two cars at the same price would you go for? Let's start with the 996 Turbo. So I would consider this car since a 2004 to be one of the sort of last analog cars out there. Cars from this point forward just had so many kind of uh, extra controls on them, nanny controls, and in the newer cars you can't even turn off say traction control and things on the cars, not completely. This isn't like that at all. This is a much more visceral driving experience. It's got like kind of one mode driving. This car doesn't have a sport mode and a normal mode. No, it just has the mode. And so because of these sorts of things, if you're going to drive this car on a daily basis, you just have to kind of be aware of that. It's not really good at slow speeds. Driving around and around downtown and this car gets kind of pissed off about it. It's not super happy about it at all. It bucks a bit and it's just difficult to drive. But where this car is really something is just the feel that you get from driving it. You've got such great feel from the steering. It still has the old steering rack in the car. It's not an electrical steering rack in the car. Another thing you get in the older cars is a great sound. So they haven't sort of mucked with the exhaust on these cars. Now this of course is a turbo so it sounds a little strange already. But the other cars in this sort of time frame were still naturally aspirated a lot of them all the other Porsches were there weren't turbos on them or anything and uh, they still have that great sound that these cars had inside the interior of the car are really some of the big differences between the two namely the gear shift this is a manual three pedal car you just can't get that sort of thing seems anymore it's very rare uh, manual parking brake we have our manual gauges something I really really like and a couple of things about these manual gauges is that they're very easy to read and they stay put you don't have a big display across the front that's constantly changing on you so you know where everything is and you just get used to it and you know where to look and that's great I really like that actually over here we have a display over here for the radio but and it's also the sat nav but these sat navs in these cars and these older 2004 cars are pretty much useless they run off a CD system and they have to be updated it's kind of a pain much easier just to use your phone but speaking Speaking of your phone, you can't connect your phone to these stock radios either. So those are some of the, you know, kind of downsides, I suppose, a bit of the older car. But I, what I really like about it is that it maintains a driver focus and a more connected driving in these cars. You don't have a bunch of distractions going on all the time. And generally, the interiors in these cars are still very comfy. These seats are nice. You wouldn't expect an enormous amount of wear. This car has a little over 60,000 miles, so not a lot of wear on the interior so you can expect a comfortable position now these aren't old cars they're still fairly modern cars they're just sort of sit in between the old classic and the brand new modern cars and maybe since these cars are a little older a few little dinks here and there aren't really going to set you off another thing that seems to be missing on a lot of modern cars are the actual buttons I know a lot of companies are getting away from actual physical buttons and I really like the buttons and the, and the probably the most important thing is that I can reach over and I can find these buttons without having to take my eyes off the road. So a modern car, say a Tesla for instance, has that big display in the front and you literally have to look off, way off to the right even to see what speed you're going. That just seems a little scary to me. I really like having buttons. I know that the buttons aren't going to move and I know that their function isn't going to change as well. So I think that actually makes this a little bit safer than some of the modern 
modern cars where you're always having a fuss with the display and try to get the climate control up or this or that. These cars have CD players in them and really don't have any connectivity to your phone. So if you like to listen to music, then you're kind of stuck with having to listen to a CD or possibly the radio, of course. But you, it'd be difficult for you to hook up an MP3 player and all that sort of thing or your phone or whatever. That could be a consideration for some people. The climate controls in these cars are a little more primitive. They do work. They're fine. They do integrate the heat and the AC together, but it's unusual to see dual climate controls, that sort of thing. Um, you know, it's still a more manual control over everything in the car. And for me, one of the biggest benefits is this. We have access to the engine in these older cars. This is the engine. When you go looking for the engine on a newer car, a lot of times you can't even see it. They've got tons of covers and plastic all over the engine. You can't even find it. And it brings up another important point. These older cars, you can still work on a bit. They are a little bit complicated, of course, but at least you can still do things like oil changes. You can work on the cooling system. You've got all your fluids and reservoirs up here that you can work with. That's kind of nice. And the newer cars, all this is hidden from you and they really would rather that you took it down to the dealership. And you can save an enormous amount of money on service just by doing this sort of stuff yourself. And if anything goes wrong with the car, it's a lot easier to diagnose the issues because uh, some of this is going to need a bit of a computer, but uh, some of it isn't. And you can diagnose, you can change your own air filter, for instance, that sort of thing. So I think that's for me, is a big benefit of these older cars. And I think it also kind of speaks to the connectivity of the car. I feel very connected to this car because I've done a bunch of work on it. I've replaced the radiators on it. I do oil changes. I've replaced the accessory belt. I've done many filter changes, that sort of thing on the car. So I have a kind of a feeling of how this car is when it's apart. And that to me is very engaging. With the modern cars, it's, it's, it's difficult to get that relationship because you, you kind of have to take everything to the dealership. So something goes wrong. And then that's a huge pain. Taking the car all the way across town, dropping it off, hopefully getting a rental car and, and coming all the way back. That to me is really difficult. So I would much rather do it whatever I can on the car myself. Here with the i8, it's a very modern car. It's very different than the older cars. This one is really crazy in that it's also a hybrid as well. But even with the cars that aren't hybrids and don't have some of the really strange electrical stuff going on with them, they're still very different than the older cars, the, the 996 Turbo we've been looking at. And I think a lot of it, it's, it's kind of interesting. I think we've traded feel and uh, connection with the car for a ton of different features and things on the car to make it more comfortable, to make it possibly a little bit easier to drive, I think. You've got forward sensing cameras, you've got rearward cameras, you've got all sorts of automatic systems. So your, head, your windshield wipers are automatic, your headlights are automatic. Everything on the car is just something you don't really have to think about anymore. And I think the manual manufacturers were thinking that that would make it a much easier car to drive. And I think for most people, I think that's actually true. And, and, and it can make it safer as well. If people continually forget to turn on their headlights in bad weather, then that, that causes a safety risk out on the road. So I can understand a lot of these features, but I think they're really not directed towards the enthusiast driver or even really car people in general. They're really just to make kind of normal people who drive cars a lot more comfortable driving them. Let's take a look inside and I'll show you a little of what I'm talking about. Inside the i8, it's all very modern inside here. You know, the control are much different. We see fewer buttons. We see our displays here, our big graphics displays. And then on the i8 and in a lot of cars, they've got a full graphics display instead of any real gauges. That's very different. Very few knobs and buttons, although there are still a few here. You've got your computer controls and things, and your, your, this in the BMW world is the iDrive. You've got quite a bit going on on the steering wheel. You've got buttons all over the steering wheel and all sorts of things. And that's because this car car has so many automated systems on it. This car will actually auto dim your brights for you. Not only will it turn on your lights for you, but you, it'll auto dim your brights for you. It's really something that's got auto dimming mirrors. Everything is fairly automatic. And I think the concept is just to make it safer and easier, which I really like, but it also sort of removes you from a lot of the tasks that keep you connected to driving in some ways. So these cars, it's very easy to kind of lose track of what you're doing. It feels like it's more like a 
a moving living room or something. And I know that cars eventually will probably move over towards auto driving mode, and I guess that's okay. But to me, it just removes all the all the connection that you've got between driving and the road. And in some ways, in my opinion, can make the car even a little less safe because you're just not paying as much attention. You've got full connectivity with your iPhone. You the modern cars have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, and you can see with a lot of people that the radio functions and the sat nav functions are the most important things in the car. And so it's not focused around driving anymore. It's focused around functions and features and that sort of thing. Maybe that's a good thing. Maybe for your commuter car, you don't want to be fussing with trying to find the right gear or trying to clutch in, in terrible stop and go traffic or trying to drive around downtown. Whereas these new modern cars have several driving modes to them. This one has three different, very distinct driving modes to it. These cars are also very comfortable. You can get heated and air conditioned seats, heated steering, wheels. You can get all sorts of stuff in these cars. The climate control system's got dual climate controls, so your, your passenger or the driver can have completely different temperatures. Electronic parking brake here. So, and that actually happens automatically when you put it into park. And here we go. Here's an automatic transmission. It depends on really what you're looking for in a car, I suppose, but it's a very different experience. Now, this is very nice as well. It's quiet. It's comfortable. It accelerates beautifully. It's it's a, quite a fast car. And so that's another thing with modern cars is the most modern cars are really faster than even the sport versions of cars 15 years ago. It's pretty amazing. The turbo is only slightly faster than this car. So that's pretty crazy. That was one of the fastest cars you could buy back in the day. And modern cars have just gotten very, very capable on the road. So that's the upside of them. And then the downside is that if anything goes wrong, you're really kind of stuck with taking this to the dealership to get it fixed because you probably, one, don't have the tools or the computer to deal with it. And three, there's a lot of fussy electronics and things in these cars. And you can really get the whole system all all mucked up very quickly. So it's best really to take these things if you have anything major going on besides outside of tires and you could possibly do oil changes and things and maybe some filter changes yourself. But really beyond that, if anything really goes wrong with the car, you're kind of stuck with taking it to the dealership. So which one of these two cars really fits the bill better for you? Now the older car, more visceral, more connected, you can get into it, you can do stuff yourself with it, or the modern car where you've got so many new driving aids on the car, it's questionably safer maybe, very automated systems, it's more quiet, it's comfortable. They really do have a lot of pluses as well. They're powerful, very interesting compare here, I think. Let us know what you think down below in the comment section. I really want to hear your comments on this. Now the car market of course is changing dramatically. We're seeing a lot more electric cars coming up and hybrids as well from Volvo to um, the Audi e-tron system to BMW's iDrive system to Porsche Taycan. So we're kind of marching through it right. We've we got we started out with normally aspirated now almost all the cars are turbocharged and then they're going to be moving to hybrid and then more electric. Electric really allows a lot of very interesting things to happen that's much more difficult in these older cars. But maybe that's not something you want. So I think it's kind of interesting. Let me know what you think. All right, so thank you so, so much for watching. Uh, as always, a very special thank you to our Patreon supporters. And until next time, safe travels. Bye.